having all the control over those halves of the map pretty much are able to uh, manage their resources well enough, again, staying under low upkeep and under high upkeep. I think Perp did a better job than Nublix did this game, uh, managing his resources and staying under upkeeps when he wasn't fighting. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that later and some d- mistakes that he made, but for now, they're both kind of they're both pretty even still. Blue is definitely the one that's behind. He's lower in uh, hero levels. He's hurting resources. He has uh, t- I think only one gold mine left. Maybe two. let me check. Uh, I think he only had the one gold mine at the time, and uh, yeah, he's still got the bottom left one. But he's running out of gold there, so he's going to be running out of gold completely here, and he doesn't have. Um, any points I'm giving him this one. So Perp's still ahead uh, because of his resource and hero levels, but Orange is really close behind. And in this game, uh, being so close, you might as well be tied. So although I'm giving uh, Nublex second place at the end of the third quarter, Perp's still, uh, 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 and I'm giving Perp the first place, they're both still very much in it. And like I said, like this said, they're very, very close um, as far as resources and uh, hero levels. So they can still have a big fight and end up being pretty even. Okay, uh, going into the fourth quarter now, uh, we'll go ahead and unpause it, and we'll talk about it while it's happening. There's going to be a lot of a lot more fights that happen here, and a lot more key things. Like I said, uh, just afterwards, um, or just what's happening just now is Nublex just got his gold mine back uh, at the pretty much right at that time, and he's uh, managing his resources. Uh, he's got two gold mines set up, and that's pretty good because a lot of the other gold mines are completely gone. If you just scout around the map, you can see how many gold mines are left. He has two of the last remaining gold mines, so he's got a big advantage here starting off this fourth quarter. Uh, we'll take a look at Perp real quick. Uh, he's just down a hero, but he still has a lot of gold set up, and a smaller army, about the same size army as Orange does. So um, at this point, uh, since there's not a lot of mines left, you don't have to worry about loot, and you're, if you're not mining from anything, let me double check to see if Perp's mining from anything before I talk out my butt. He's got 250 gold left and one, and... 7,000 gold left. Okay, so you still need to be a little bit careful about bursting right into high upkeep. But when you're out of mining and you don't have any more mines to go, um, or sorry, when you're not mining anymore and all the mines are gone, bust into high upkeep and just stay there. You know, use all your resources and you want to. that's when you want to have your higher level army with you at all times because chances are, if all the gold mines are running out, um, that the other players can be doing that too, and you need to be prepared to fight them. You can't slowly fight them with a 70 food army when they have 100, and then hope to be able to fortif- fortify that 75 food army real quickly. You know, because then you got to wait for build times, and you, you're a few minutes off from being able to match his 100 food army. So a lot of hit and runs. That's undead style in free falls, doing a lot of hit and runs. So uh, that allows him to be a little bit more careful with the resources than maybe some of the other races, but uh, still. All right, we're going to be unpausing here at the 45-minute mark. I'm at 2x speed, 5 seconds to an unpause. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, unpause. All right, uh, the big fights that are going to be happening here. Uh, did I make note of what time it's happening? Uh, no, no big fights at the moment. Uh, the key thing that's going to happen here, and we'll see it happen relatively early on, is Orange is going to use his Priestess of the Moon to uh, cast an Owl Scout. And the Owl Scout is really, really powerful. And that can't be killed, in case you guys don't know that. So it's a really good scouting uh, ability, obviously. That's what it's called. So he's able to find out and keep tabs on what's happening on the other players without them really knowing about it. And also that gives him uh, C and Viz when he casts it in Ares units in case any of those undead players have a shade near him, which in most of the case, if you're playing an undead player, you're going to have a shade on him. So we'll see right here, and Al Scout is quickly attached to Blue's army. He sees it's a big army. Uh, he might be able to fight that and have uh, something happen, but right now both players, again, they've just spent the last 15 minutes not fighting. They want to play something and they want to make it happen. So Blue goes in to try to take out Perp with Orange's Owl Scout on him, but Perp instantly TPs out. Now this is a uh, really weird place to do it. Uh, Perp doesn't want to fight. He's not ready to do it. He doesn't think he's, he's he wants to make the fight happen between him and Nublex, not him and Pencil Lone. So he's a little bit angry now that Pencil Lone is uh, taking out all his expansions. He thinks it's a bad idea, and you'll see him mention it later. Uh, that you know, why are you taking me out when clearly, you know. Nublex is probably the bigger threat at the time. But, you know, obviously they're both kind of even, as I said before, um, with Purple being slightly above, um, they don't want to make it happen. So you saw just now two really big TPs. Um, Sorry, what's a big TP? (laughs) Anyway, they didn't want to fight, so they kind of went hit and run, went back and forth. Now, 
there's going to be a fight that happens here relatively quickly, and it's going to be bad. Oh, another cool thing about the perp dead, and this is something that you get to see in free-for-alls, is uh, he got an orc peon out of there when he was fighting at Nublix's base, and now he's got a, a fortress of um, the orc, an orc fortress going, and he's got beast he's being built. He's going to make bat riders to help counter the mass air by the uh, blue player. That's a pretty neat uh, strategy. Unfortunately, he takes a, a big hit here with all those gargoyles. His air that he has now isn't able to counter all those gargoyles. He's kind of got a mixed army. Uh, they both have a good amount of gargoyles, but um, actually now they pretty much have the same type of army composition. Yeah, never mind. They're pretty close in army composition, so it's just going to be a matter of making the fight happen and when they're going to do that. Uh, this game is going to end really quickly after, after uh, one of them gets knocked out, and we'll watch what happens. Uh, Blue's bringing the fight now to Purple's base, and once you're in their main base, this is pretty much saying, I'm going to fight you, and this is the best opportunity for you to fight me, so why don't you come in? He leads with his Inferno, which is pretty uh, good strategy, because all the uh, Spear Towers are going to automatically focus on him. Uh, the Purple Undead player could refocus those, but he doesn't. So a big fight happening here. Uh, Blue's trying to take out the... Uh, Spirit Tower at the moment, and you see Orange, he's just hanging out the ends. He's got his Owl Scout in there. He's going to say, okay, I'm going to let these guys duke it out, and then I'm going to come in and pick up the pieces. So Orange is a really, really smart play right here. He could go in whenever he wants. He's going to go in soon here, but he's waiting until the big fight happens, and then he's going to make it happen. So uh, he's coming in here slowly off the back. Still hasn't made his way in, which is pretty interesting. Again, playing the patient game, playing the scouting game. There's no reason for him to come in there. He thinks he he knows he can beat Blue because he knows how hurt he is on resources and how good he has it on resources. Throughout the game, he's been had constant ties on Blue, so he'd rather Blue beat Perp and then him come in and Orange uh, Nublex can finish off Perp and then he can quickly go off and finish Blue. So this is key point in the game right here. Big turning point for Pencil to have made that decision. Uh, it was really Pencil's decision who he wanted to win. He could have teamed up with the Purple player and tried to take out Nublix, um, but in this case he ended up taking out the Purple player and letting Nublix win. So for whatever reason, Blue made that decision. Uh, he didn't really, he's got a decent en enough army to be able to fight with uh, Nublix, but um, the ch Hippogriffs do a, a good bit of damage to those Gargoyles, and unless you have a lot of healing scrolls, it's going to be hard to uh, counter a lot of that uh, anti-air that Orange has. It was still a relatively even fight there. If you take a look at the army size, press an F11. Uh, it was like 80 to 80 food about, so they could have had a big fight there and it would have been relatively easy, but Pencils uh, obviously had the decision to make that fight happen. He, and if you notice when this game started, he was the one who started the fighting. It wasn't uh, beneficial for Orange or Blue to, st or Orange or Purple to start the fights because uh, Blue uh, was the one who actually needed to make the decision on it. Because both of them were high, they just wanted to stay and wait for their opportunity which is what Perp was trying to do, but he had to end up fighting and defending uh, Blue when that happened. So Perp's trying to escape now, and he's hiding burrows and doing some crazy stuff to stay alive. Uh, I've seen this work a lot of times in free-for-alls. You never want to leave someone uh, alive, especially at the lower parts of the game, um, or even in the early parts when there's a lot of gold mines still left available to mine from. You want to be able to finish them off. Don't let them get away because they can rebuild and come hit you at the most, oppor most inopportune time. Uh, Blue scouting him out with a shade there, which is nice. That's uh, going to get scouted out as soon as the bottom makes an owl scout, however. Um, blah, 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 blah. Perp's making up uh, a little bit more of his goal mines. Again, he's just, uh, sorry, he made a necropolis, so he can try to stay invisible for a little while. Uh, but Orange is going to be able to scout that out and finish him off. Uh, we'll see as he goes around the map, clearing out all the go expansions now. This is just being really methodical, going to each gold mine and finishing him off. Um, and that's how that's going to work. There's no point in killing off all the red units because he's already left. So you notice he's specifically targeting the structures of the players that are still in the game. Uh, these red units have stayed in the game for a while. The uh, red player ended up leaving the game after that early hit in the first quarter. So let's see. Orange just scouted out the last thing. He's setting out his um, Owl Scout. There he said as soon as the Owl Scout came out, the shade died. Um, and what's uh, bad about <laughs> poor on dead players in this situation is... Uh, it's easy to scout out where their necropolis is hiding because it makes the makes the uh, ground all uh, dilapidated and evil looking. So it's evil, or it's easy to scout that out. So now it's just a matter of finding out where he's at. He's, like I said, he's going to run into him, finish off the purple player, and then he's going to be able to go in with a uh, with level six on his priestess of the moon after the big fight with perp. He'll be able to use his ultimate on blue, which I've saying the biggest thing to look forward to in this replay is the use of ultimates, and that's what's going to happen here. So Perp's trying to run away. He doesn't have a big enough army at all to compete with Orange. There's nothing for him to do but run. Um, 
really nothing he can do at all now because if he can't defend his uh, units or his buildings, uh, he's going to be out of the game. So that's it. Structures died. He's out of the game. Doesn't matter.